ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ما بعد I welcome all of you. We continue reading from Al Mulakhas Al Fiqhi for our noble Sheikh Al Walid Al Allama Saleh bin Fawzan Al Fawzan. Hafidahu Allah Ta'ala wa Rafa Lahu wa Liwalidi wa Al Muslimina wa Al Muslimat. Ameen. Babun fi Walimati Al Urs. Today, inshallah Ta'ala, we will learn about the Walima, the, 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 the wedding feast. Amen. قال الشيخ صالح حفظه الله أصل الوليمة تمام الشيء واجتماعه يقال أولم الرجل إذا اجتمع عقله وخلقه ثم نقل هذا المعنى إلى تسمية طعام العرس به لاجتماع الرجل والمرأة بسبب الزواج ولا يقال لغير طعام العرس وليمة من حيث اللغة وعرف الفقهاء the Sheikh first of all said where this word Walima came from. The asal is that <coughs> is when something is completed, something is together, put together. And the Sheikh he says, Awlam al-Rajul, when that person is uh, have a sound intellect, likewise he's strong in his body and the like. Then this meaning was given to the food that is uh, prepared when a person get married. Inshallah, they invite the family members from both sides and also friends and neighbors and the like. And because the man and the woman now they are married and they are together. Uh, he, the Sheikh he said, and he, this is walima. This term walima is applied only to that food of wedding, the wedding f- feast, not for any other uh, gatherings on food. Because people they do gather for food for many different reasons, but walima is uh, the name given to the food that is prepared. When a person gets married. قال وهناك أطعمة تصنع لمناسبات كثيرة لكل منها اسم خاص. He said there is some other food that is prepared for different occasions, and therefore they have different names. وحكم وليمة العرس. In the second point, the Sheikh talks about the ruling on this walima, the the wedding feast. أنها سنة باتفاق أهل العلم وقال بعضهم بوجوبها لأمره صلى الله عليه وسلم بها ولوجوب إجابة الدعوة إليها فقد قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لعبد الرحمن بن عوف رضي الله عنه حين أخبره أنه تزوج لما تزوج عبد الرحمن بن عوف وأخبر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لو أولم ولو بشات متفق عليه أولم هنا هذا فعل أمر والأمر كما يقول أهل العلم يفيد الوجوب ما لا ما لا لا يصرفه صارف إلى الندب والاستحباب متفق عليه وأولم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم على زوجاته زينب وصفية وميمون بنت الحارث holding a wedding feast وليمة is an act of سنة is a sunnah according to the unanimous agreement of Muslim scholars. So that's what the Sheikh chose. He chose that it is a sunnah. And he says that some scholars maintain that it is obligatory to have the walima when a person get married and held the walima. They said some of the scholars, they said that it is obligatory action, not just the, the recommended sunnah. He said, this is due to the command of the Prophet 
and that one is obliged to to attend also when he's invited and Sheikh is going to give some benefits as related to this and we give you some more benefits inshallah ta'ala as well as when you are invited to the walima <coughs> you go you don't is it okay for you is not when it's obligatory for you to go when it's not to illustrate the Prophet sallallahu said to Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu the well known companion he was from the one of the the six companions of the shura that Umar radiallahu anhu left it for them to choose one of them to be the Khalifa on the Shura Uh, when he got married he informed the Prophet that he got married so the Prophet said to him hold a wedding feast even by offering one sheep by sacrificing one sheep it says agreed upon by Imam al-Bukhari, Imam Muslim, Rahimahum Allah. Moreover, the Prophet ﷺ himself offered a wedding feast to Walima when he married his wives, Zainab, Safiya, and Maymuna bint al Harith. Uh, we want to share with you some extra benefits. And Nawawi Rahimahullah Ta'ala said, واختلف في وليمة العرس هل واجب أم مستحبة So there is a difference of opinions among the scholars as related to the walima is it obligatory or مستحب recommended قال والأصح عندنا أنها سنة مستحبة وبه قال مالك فيحمل الأمر على الندب he says what uh, the sound opinion would does like the Shafi'i scholars that it is sunnah is recommended it's recommended to meaning it's not obligatory he said this is also the statement of Imam Malik rahimahullah so therefore the order was given by the Prophet sallallahu to uh, in these narrations the, like the one you heard to about Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu anh, it, it means not obligatory. It doesn't mean that it's obligatory, but rather it is recommended. وقال ابن قدامة في المغني لا خلاف بين أهل العلم في أن الوليمة سنة في العرس مشروعة. Also ابن قدامة, one of the great scholars of the Salaf, he says in المغني, there is no difference of opinions amongst the people of knowledge that وليمة is سنة in the wedding. And it is mashru'a. Keep in mind that this term here, mashru'a, it, it doesn't mean uh, obligatory. It is legislated, but there are things that are legislated for us. For the things that are legislated for us, and we should do, some of them are obligatory, while others are recommended, while others are permissible. So when you hear mashru'a, this is how it is. So then you still have to know to find out the dalil. Yeah, this is something that is mashru'a. It is legislated. But is it recommended? Is it permissible? It is, is it uh, obligatory? Then the, the other adilla will make, like for example, the adhan is mashru'a, right? The adhan is legislated for us, right? Okay, what is it now? Is it obligatory? Is it permissible? It is recommended. Wajib. We have one statement. It is wajib. Obligatory. All of you agreed with him? Recommended. We have another opinion. See how it left? We have a recommended. Does anybody say something else? Oh, we the here Hassan has another opinion. This is how you understand sometimes the ulama, Imam Malik has two opinions. وفي رواية لأحمد وفي رواية أخرى عنه شفت What do you want to say now, Hassan? Since you said it's wajib. فرد كفاية آي نعم هذا أحسن This is a communal obligation. No. Uh, this one was a little bit mm. Let me give you an easy example. Uh, growing the beard for men and not shaving the beard. There was that. Is this legislated or not? 
or it's just customs. Because some people think it's a custom. No, no, no. Those people in that country, they grow their beers. These here, they don't. And if you, I'm not from that country, man. So don't talk to me. This is how we look at this matter? No. The same thing. Covering properly for the woman to cover herself properly. Is it legislated for the woman to cover properly or not? It is legislated. Since it is legislated, they need to know in the legislation how to apply this matter. So nobody will come from his country or in our country, this is how we dress. We cover everything except for the hair. Some other day says, no, the hair is the only thing should be shown. Why? It's haram. It's haram. But the bosoms, the, the, the legs, it's okay to be shown. Who told you it's halal? Well, this is how we do it back home. You see how people, they get wrong? No, if it's legislated, then move on. How you apply it? Is it obligatory? Is it recommended? Is it mubah? According to the dalil, not according to this country says, or this sheikh says, or the dalil. Naam. So now growing the beard for men, what is it? Is it, first of all, is it legislated or not? Mashru'a. Okay. But is it that mashru'a that is obligatory? A. B. Recommended? C. Mubah. Which one? Wajib is obligatory. Likewise, women to cover properly. Is it legislated or not? Legislated. A. Wajib. B. Mustahab. C. Mubah. Permissible. Which one? A. Wajib. Aina. To be kind to your parents. Dutiful to your parents. Is it mashru' or ghair mashru'? Or is it just a tradition? People in the south, they're nice. People in the north, they're nicer. You, you thought I'm going to say something else. I just try to say good and think good about the people. I'm talking about like Chicago, south part of Chicago and north part of Chicago, okay? Tell you, or New York, whatever. <laughs> now, so now being dutiful to one part, is it A, wajib, obligatory, B, mustahab, Recommended. C. Mubah. Permissible. Hmm? Hey, it's wajib, yeah. Wajib. Nobody can tell you why it's legislated according to my terms. If they're nice to me, I'm nice to them. If I have a good day, I'll be nice to them. If I'm going through some stuff, they're going to go through that stuff with me. You can't do that stuff. This is not how things is done, right? The same way. The woman is like, look, if I go to Hajj, I'm going to cover properly. But once I come back to America, I'm going to go back to what I, uh, I'm doing because I can't cover here in America. Everybody looking at me. No, you need to know what is legislated for you. Is it obligatory? Is it mustahab? Is it recommended? And do it. No. وَسُئِلَ الْعَلَّامِ بْنُ بَازِ رَحِمَ اللَّهِ These are, these are side, side notes that I'm sharing with you. They're not in the book. وَسُئِلَ الْعَلَّامِ بْنُ بَازِ رَحِمَ اللَّهِ Our noble scholar, Imam, Al-Allama ibn Baz, Abdul Aziz ibn Baz, رَحِمَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى He was asked, مَا حُكْمُ مَنْ لَمْ يُولِمْ لِزَوَاجِهِ وَهَلْ يَتَأَثَّرُ عَقْدُ النِّكَاحِ بِهَذَا وَهَلْ يُعْتَبَرُ عَاسِيًا لِلرَّسُولِ صلى الله عليه وسلم حيث أمر عبد الرحمن بن عوف أن يولم ولو بشات The person wants to know what is the ruling of a person who did not offer this walima, the wedding feast, when he, when he got married. And since this person did not have the walima, does that, does that affect his marriage, meaning make it invalid? And that person who did not offer a walima, is he considered disobedient to the Messenger of Allah Wasallam? since the Messenger of Allah Wasallam ordered Abdul Rahman ibn Awf to uh, offer the wedding feast? No. This question understood, right? No. فَأَجَابَ رَحِمَ اللَّهِ Shaykh bin Baz, he answered as follows. بِخْتِ بِتَصَرُّف الْوَلِيمَ سُنَّ مُؤَكَّدَ وَلَوْ بِشَاتْ كَمَا قَالَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ أَوْ لِمُوَ لَوْ بِشَاتْ لِعَبْدُ الرَّحْمَنِ بْنِ عَوْفِ He says, offering the walima, the wedding feast, is a sunnah, mu'akkada, recommended sunnah. Even if by 
slaughtering one sheep. As the Prophet said, Awli Mulaw Bishat to Abdul Rahman ibn Awf as we we mentioned that earlier. Qala walakin la yu athir tarkuhu al nikah. He said, but it does not affect the marriage, validity of the marriage if a person did not perform or offer the walima. Al nikah sahih. ولو لم تحصل هناك وليمة إذا تمت شروطه وأركانه فهو صحيح. He says the marriage contract, the marriage is is valid, even if there is no walima, as long as the marriage fulfilled the conditions and the pillars that are required for a marriage to be sound and valid. لكن كونه كونه يولم بما تيسر هو السنة. The Sheikh said, however, for a person to uh, uh, offer the walima according to his ability, that's the sunnah. Then the shaykh says, وَالْقَوْلُ بِوُجُوبِ الْوَلِيمَ قَوْلٌ قَوِيٌّ Even though the shaykh says that walima is a sunnah, recommended sunnah, sunnah mu'akkada, still he says, by the way, those scholars who they say that it is obligatory to offer, to offer the walima, he said, that's a strong opinion. He said, that's a strong opinion. He says, لِأَنَّ الرَّسُولَ صَلَى اللَّهُ قَالَ أَوْلِمُ لَوْ بِشَادٍ Because the Prophet صلى he gave an order, he used in this verb, أَوْلِمْ That's a verb, verb of order and command. قَالَ فَالْقَوْلُ بِالْوُجُوبِ لَهُ قُوَّةٍ وَلَوْ بِشَيْءٍ يَسِيرٍ He said, so... Those who they say that is obligatory, then is is a strong is a strong opinion. Even if with whatever you can. Al watarku dalika khilafu sunnah, wala yu atir fi sahat al nikah. Sheikh Bin Bazi says, however, if a person did not offer the walima, the wedding feast, that's that's in opposition to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Is in opposition of the, to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and but still does not affect the validity of the marriage. Now, ثم ننتظر إلى ننتقل ننتقل إلى النقطة الثالثة. The third point ووقت إقامة وليمة العرس موسع يبدأ من عقد النكاح إلى انتهاء أيام العرس. Now, as for the time for offering the the wedding feast, the walima. Extends from the time of concluding the marriage contract until the end of the wedding days. Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah Taala he says that Mashhur, what is known is that the, and especially from the action of the Prophet Sallallahu that the walima come after the consummation of the marriage. Now, wa miqdar walima al arus now. How much? How much food person should prepare for the walima? قال ومقدار وليمة العرس قال بعض الفقهاء إنه لا ينقص عن شات والأول الزياد عليها لمفهوم حديث عبد الرحمن بن عوف أولم ولو بشات لم يقل له أولم بشات فقط أو أولم بشات ولو أي حديث عبد الرحمن بن عوف that the Prophet ﷺ said to him, أولم ولو بشات هذا ما تيسر هذا ما تيسر ذلك وإلا فبحسب المقدرة كما قال الشيخ بن باز However, what is the, the uh, amount نعم, as for the amount of food offered in this وليمة some of the فقهاء, the علماء, the scholars they have the, the opinion that it is not it shouldn't be less than one sheep and that more than that one sheep is better. And they base their opinion on the above mentioned hadith, in which the Prophet said to Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, hold a wedding feast even if by offering one sheep. Even, and we all understand, even by offering one sheep, I mean at the least, at the least you offer one sheep. The Sheikh Fawzani said this, of course, if a person is able to do so. This is to be done when a person is able to afford it. Otherwise, the wedding feast is to be held according to one's financial capability. 
وقد أولم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم على صفية بحيس حيس وهو الدقيق والسمن والأقد يخلط بعدها ببعض ووضعه على نطع صغير فدل ذلك على إزاء الوليمة بغير ذبح الشات However with this if someone can do one sheep is good someone do more than one sheep it's okay but if a person cannot afford to slaughter a sheep or two and the like, then whatever they can, whatever food they can to prepare and present to the people, to the guests. The Prophet ﷺ, for example, the Prophet ﷺ held a wedding feast, a walima, of hais. This hais is a cooked food or mix of food consisting of flour, they cook it, and some fat, whether it's some oil or something like that, and uh, some cheese together. They mix together, they cook together. When the Prophet ﷺ married, Safiya bint Huyay, radiallahu anha, this indicates that a wedding feast, the walima, is sufficient to be held without slaughtering the sheep. So you don't have to always slaughter. If you can, alhamdulillah. If you can't, prepare whatever food you can. With your abilities. Now, another point. قال ولا يجوز الإسراف في وليمة العرس. الله أكبر. كما يفعل الآن من ذبح الأغنام الكثيرة والإبل وتكثير الطعام على وجه البذخ والإسراف ثم لا تؤكل بل يكون مآل تلك الأطعمة واللحوم إلقاؤها في الزبالات وإهدارها فهذا مما تنهى عنه الشريعة. ولا تستسيغه العقول السليمة ويخشى على فاعله ومن رضي به من العقوبة وزوال النعمة إضافة إلى ما يسحب تلك الولائم الفخمة من أشر وبطر واجتماعات لا تسلم في الغالب من المنكرات الله أكبر Now the Sheikh is going to give some very very important advices and correcting some of the bad and evil habits that some people they fall into and mistakes that some Muslims fall into in the walima and they think by doing this they think oh he's the best guy and the ignorant people they they be talking about the walima that he is the best person this is the best walima ever which is not actually in reality the sheikh says extravagance in offering this walima is impermissible it's impermissible to go overboard. However, people, he says, in our days, offer lots of sheep, camels. You find the walima, they slaughter sheep, camels. Other people, they add to that turkey, chicken, this, a lot of stuff. Rice, macaronis, salads, uh, subhanAllah. Cookies, uh, pastries, fruits, beverages, extravagance, different kinds of food, out lavishness and excessiveness. Such extravagance causes a huge amount of food to be left and eaten and thrown into the trash or you have the rubbish bins and the garbage. And that money is just wasted in vain which is forbidden by our Sharia, the Islamic law, extravagance, and, and rejected by reason too. Those who hold such lavish wedding feasts, as well as those who satisfied with them, they agree, they pleased with what they were doing, are reliable, are liable actually to divine punishment and deprivation of blessings. Besides, such luxurious wedding feasts may contain illegal kinds of amusements and meetings that usually lead to sinfulness. قال وقد تقام هذه الولائم في الفنادق ويحصل فيها من تساهل النساء بالستر والاحتشام واختلاط الرجال بهن ما يخشى من عواقبه الوخيمة وقد يتخلل تلك الاحتفالات أغان ومزامير ويجلب لها المطربون الفسق والمصورون الظلمة الذين يصورون النساء ويصورون العريسين. 
The Sheikh said they may also, these walimas, they may be held in hotels. And some people, they do that. They go to the hotels where women may not pay much attention to their decency and modesty and mingle freely and shamelessly with men. First of all, because they go into a hotel, now they want to dress to the occasion where they think that their shayateen tell them. They want to boast one another who's going to come and dress in the best way and they want to like and they mingle with other men because they, they mix everybody in there. And even if they said, now the women are going to go to this area and a man, but what was happening in the hallway? Men and women mixing, Allah al Musta'an. Which may lead to disastrous consequences. Furthermore, such weddings, banquets, in a Uh, he said, furthermore, such uh, wedding banquets nowadays may involve corruptive songs and music as well as dissolute singers and photographers. Because they do. <laughs> they, they bring big names according to how rich the, the family is. Some family, if the family is, uh, is rich, well, they, they go and hire uh, famous singers. As we heard, some of them, Allah in some Muslim countries, for the weddings of their whatever boys or girls, they, they, they call for Rihanna, whatever name her name is, and Beyonce and all of them. And they give them and this Lopez lady, what's her name? Whatever name is. Huh? Don't act like you're honest and modest. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. This is not the time when you're going to like ask modest or stuff for Allah. How can you know this stuff? I'm just trying to prove a point in here. Don't tell like now you're going to be honest with me. Hey, that's what J. Lo, they call her, right? All right, so we, need, we hear stuff, we know stuff, man. No, no, no this is something very important. That's good. Hey, you can't just like in front of the people say, oh, I don't know them. No. Yeah, hey, Allah knows what you know, what you don't know. It just mean because you know these names that you, you, you're involved with them. This is a fitna we live in. Yeah, hey, you go to McDonald's and there's her name and picture on the, on the, on the cap of McDonald. Talking about, I don't know. You do know stuff. Just stay away from that stuff. But as for now, we know. Right or wrong? <laughs> you love <it>, that. <laughs> huh? Now, this is important. You know. It's not like because you know LeBron James that you go and watch. watch uh, when he comes here with the Falcons, you go and play. Uh, you watch. Huh? Ah, uh -huh. see? Correcting me now. There you go. Huh? <laughs> Whatever. We know these guys because they're out there. You know, this is their country, man. They're out there all over, bulletin boards, on the buses, right? On the cabs. They are everywhere, wherever you go, on subways. They are in here and there. So, that's what I'm telling you. This is true. But if people, they are like, they don't have that much money. And when they bring these people, by the way, they give them a lot of money. A lot of money. Waste of money. Those who are not that rich, they still bring some singers from the local. Nobody knows them. But still, sin is a sin. <laughs> you pay a million dollars or a hundred dollars. That's Allah's salam wa Now, you just the, 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 the price tag that changed. That's it. All right? Hey, now. Sheikh says, see, this some people they bring, and photographers too. They hire people. Even with, in our time now where everybody can take a picture, for those that Allah have mercy on them, but they still is like, no, you're amateurs. They need to bring a, uh, what do you call them? A who? Professional. That's what I'm talking about. Professional photographer. Somebody who has a degree. Went to Yale University. 
I'm going to give them a lot of money. <laughs> right? And they're going to come and take those pictures. Why? Because later on, tell them, these pictures that were taken by so-and-so. No way. This guy is famous. How you got him here? You know, we got skills. We got connections. No connections to aqidah, to tawheed. Connections to the shayateen, connections. All of this, so they can talk about it for years. Oh, there was an Amariyat. That was your walima? Yeah. Wow. Food was just, they, they throw it. Yeah, in tons. And they like, and they, they boast in with this. Yeah, the food we throw, more than people eat. Yeah, it was fun. Music, oh yeah, this singer and this sinner came and this sinner came and this sinner came. Allah, the picture they were taken by the best photographer. The one who actually take photographs for this singer and this sinner and this, this and this. No, that's not the people they think that's it. That's Allah, salam wa May Allah protect us from such things. Now they come and take pictures of everybody and especially the, the bride. Because the bride now, they, they will dress her up in so many dresses, Egyptian style, both modern and ancient one, this Mexican style, Pakis, Pakistani style, Indian style, Japanese style, Chinese style, Arab style, this style, African style. And they keep changing them and bringing her, <laughs> bringing her again. Sit in front of the people, take pictures with her. Oh, the winner. You should have That's our last salam al but these things are happening. They're taking place amongst those Muslims who we need to learn our deen and try to teach them the aqidah sahiha. Not just uh, make fun of them or laugh when we mention these things. No, this is the da'wah, the du'at who are sincere. That's what they do. Our noble scholars, that's what they do. We see it. Look, right here in their books, they warn against these things. And if Allah wants good for certain people, that all they do, they, re- they reduce. They're like, subhanAllah, I'm not going to fall into this. Astaghfirullah, this is not good. And we should do the same thing. We learn and we advise others. If you know somebody is getting married, tell him, Akhi, what you know about marriage. I got it, I got it. Talk to him about the conditions of the marriage, the pillars of marriage, the rights he has, the rights she has over him, if her parents have any right, her family, all of this. And then, Walima, how are you going to do the Walima? everything. I know, Barakallah. Then the Shaykh says, SubhanAllah, he says, after he mentioned they hold this in hotels and extravagance and food is thrown away in waste to and music and singing and mixing and mingling and, and lavish and extravagance and all of that. Then the Shaykh he says, In addition, lots of money is being spent and wasted on such celebrations uselessly and rather corruptively, leading to nothing but dissolution. Therefore, those who held such corrupt banquets must fear Allah and beware of His punishment. Allah exalted be He, subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Qasas, verse 58, in the English translation. And how many a city have we destroyed that was insolent in its way of living? Because of the way they live. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-A'raf verse 31, the English translation, and eat and drink, but do not be excessive. Indeed, Allah likes not those who commit excess. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah verse 60, eat and drink from the provision of Allah and do not commit abuse on the earth, spreading corruption. So we eat in moderation. We learn how to eat, how to drink, how to do the walima, not to go to 
to to extreme and fall into sins ثم قال another point ويجب على من دعي لحضور وليمة العرس أن يجيب الدعوة إذا توفرت فيه أو فيها يعني الوليمة إذا توفرت فيها هذه الشروط now is a very important point we mentioned that in early the sheikh says now it is obligatory for whoever is invited to a walima to attend. If you're a Muslim, you're invited to a walima to attend provided it meets the following conditions, meaning the walima, not you. These conditions applied on the walima itself. If someone invites us and say, you brothers, come into the walima next next Friday after Jumu'ah, then there is certain conditions that have to be, to be there for this walima to make it obligatory upon us to go, to attend. Number one, the first al is that you are the walima al-ula. This is from Sheikh Al-Fawzan in the Mulakhas. You are the first walima al-ula, and if you are the first walima for this walima, you don't have to be there. ما زاد على الأول ثم ذكر الشيخ حديث الوليمة أول يوم حق والثاني معروف والثالث رياء وسمعة رواه أبو داود وغيره يعني أبو داود وابن ماجة لكن الإمام الألباني رحمه الله تعالى ضعف الحديث في ضعيف أبي داود وكذلك في الإرواء حديث ضعيف الشيخ منشن that the first is that the wedding feast the وليمة one is invited to must be the first one held on the occasion of that marriage. The first walima. If it is repeated on the occasion of the same marriage, one is not obli- obligated to attend more than the first one. That's what the Sheikh says. If people, they want to do like three days walima or four days or whatever the case, then you go the first time. And then the Sheikh mentioned a hadith uh, holding a wedding feast on the first day of the wedding is a duty, on the second day is a good practice, but on the third day is a sign of hypocrisy or ostentation. However, this hadith that is uh, collected by Imam Abu Dawood and Ibn Majah, Shaykh al-Bani rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that this hadith is weak in, the, in Sunan Abu Dawood and also in, al- in Al-Irwa, hadith number 1950-1950 in Al-Irwa. الشرط الثاني أن يكون الداعي مسلما The second condition that the host must be a Muslim The one who is inviting the people to his walima is a Muslim الشرط الثالث أن يكون الداعي من غير العصاة المجاهرين بالمعصي الذين يجب هجرهم أن يكون الداعي من غير العصاة المجاهرين بالمعصي الذين يجب هجرهم Was that the third or fourth? Third, right? The host must not be one of the manifestly and shamelessly disobedient to Allah. For such people must be avoided and de- deserted. Someone who disobey Allah in public, persistent upon sins, not someone who go and whatever he's, he's uh, afflicted by, he goes and hide and do it between him and you know, now this person, they do it in front, like those who smoke in front of everybody, drink in front of everybody, disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, isbal, shaving beers, no, they don't, don't care. Ghayba and amima, listening to music in front of everybody, mingling with other women, no problem. Selling haram, no problem. Working with haram, their business bills upon them. These people manifestly, they sin. Manifestly, so you do not attend. Number four, أن يعينه الداعي بالدعوة ويخصه بأن لا تكون الدعوة عامة. That the invitee, can we say that the invitee, the one who's been invited, that's the English word. Huh? Now it is. The invitee, the trustee. Okay, the one who was invited must be. 
personally invited, meaning it is not to be just an open general invitation. So if he come to you and say, Jamal, I'm inviting you to my walima. Somebody, right, said that to you. Because I'm not having no walima any soon, okay? <laughs> Ramzi will invite you for the walima, inshallah. Okay? Huh? Ask him. I don't know. <laughs> Let's give an example. <clears throat> what about that? I don't know. Hussein, inshallah. These are our single brothers, young brothers. Inshallah, they're getting married, right, Muhammad? Huh? Hilb, hilb. Lara hilb and halwa, inshallah. Tayyip. But if someone just come and say, brothers, uh, all of you are invited to my walima. No, you have to go? Huh? No, you don't. It's not obligatory upon you. You have to be personal. If he just come and say, all of you here in this class, you're invited to my walima. No, he didn't said, he didn't specify you and said, you are invited to my walima. I, I invite you. You understand? No. Yeah, because now it's a general invitation. But still, it's good to go, alhamdulillah. Ashartu al-rabi من سيؤذن وقت الأذان وصل؟ he was no I think it's three more minutes whoever phone has man I don't know he's on something else because yesterday was before was after than today no it can be so we will make sure it's the right time right it's like seven twelve today it's only seven oh nine now so we still have some minutes. الشرط الخامس ألا يكون في الوليمة منكر كخمر وأغان ومزامير ومطربين كما يحصل في بعض الولائم في هذا الوقت. The fifth condition that the wedding feast, the walima, was invited to must be void of anything unlawful, such as intoxicants, singers, songs, music, mixing, etc. As happens in some walimas these days, ولا يعلم الله. Invite to Walima, but a lot of problems. Mixing, men, women, women not dressed properly, men not dressed properly, they mixing, no problem. Why are you mixing? Ah, hey, we don't have time for that. This is Walima, okay? Come and eat and go. Ah, hey, music, that's not for you. We know you're Salafi. Just go over there, eat and go. Here's some cotton, put it in your ears. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> Women here, Akhi, same room, lower your gaze. Close your eyes, brother. Stay here, we give you your plate. Is it about, is, is it about eating? Do, do we go to this walima for the purpose of food or for other reasons? It's not for the food, yeah, Akhi. It's very important, that's why. So if you know certain people doing these things, you don't go. It's not obligatory upon, upon you to go. قال فإذا توافرت هذه الشروط وجبت إجابة الدعوة لقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم شر الطعام طعام الوليمة يمنعها من يأتيها ويدعى إليها من يأباها ومن لم يجب الدعوة فقد عصى الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم رواه مسلم The Sheikh says if these conditions are met Sheikh Mullah Thaymin he has other conditions he mentions some of these in here but he added some I have them I don't know if you have some time to read them to you if not next class إن شاء الله before we go to the next chapter. Now, so he says, if these conditions are met, the invitee, meaning the one who's been invited to the walima, should attend. For the Prophet said in this hadith that is collected by Imam Muslim in his Sahih, the worst kind of food is that of the wedding feast to which are invited those ignoring it. They don't want to be there, but they, well, now you have to be there because for other reasons and from which are forbidden those keen on coming to it. They just want to invite those big shots who don't want to be there. They don't have time. And even if they stop, they stop for five minutes or this, and they leave. That's why the food is going to be thrown away. 
But those who are poor and needs to eat, and mashallah, and then they love the, the Muslims, they want to come, they don't want them in there. These are the worst walimas when they invite only the big shots and they deprive the, the, the poor and the needy and the like. He who does not, and then here is the point of reference, the Prophet said, he who does not respond to the invitation of the walima has disobeyed Allah and his messenger. Has disobeyed Allah and his messenger. Qala Shaykh, the, the point before the last one in this chapter, وَيُسَنُّ إِعْلَانُ النِّكَاحِ أَيْ إِذْهَارُهُ وَإِشَاعَتُهُ لِقَوْلِهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم أَعْلِنُوا هَذَا النِّكَاحِ وَفِي لَفْضِ أَظْهِرُ النِّكَاحِ رواه ابن ماجه وحسنه الألباني رحمه الله في الإرواء وفي المشكات Likewise it is uh, an act of sunnah to, publish, to publicly announce the marriage for the Prophet said make marriage publicly known Ibn Majah related in the following wording make marriage publicly announced Sheikh Al-Albani said this hadith is Hassan ويسن الضرب عليه بالدف لقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم فصل ما بين الحلال والحرام الصوت والدف في النكاح رواه النسائي وأحمد الترمذي وحسنه وحسنه الألباني أيضا. The last point, uh, it is considered an act of sunnah also to celebrate to celebrate by beating duffs, the duff. As the Prophet said, the distinction between what is lawful and what is prohibited while celebrating a wedding is the permissibility of the voices of people while making the marriage publicly known and the duff at the marriage ceremony. And this hadith uh, related by Imam al-Nasai and Ahmad al-Tirmidhi and who said it is Hassan. Likewise, Imam al-Albani said this hadith is, is Hassan. As for the what I'm going to read to you from what Shaykh Muhammad Haymin mentioned, he mentioned the, those points as related to the, the conditions for the walima, they have to be met in walima. Other for a person become obligatory upon that person to attend, otherwise they don't. When he mentioned that there should be no evil, no munkar, disobedience, whether mixing, music, photographing, taking pictures and the like, he says if 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 he is able to 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 uh, change the evil, he should go. He should attend, and by doing that, now he's doing two two good things. He's honoring the invitation, and he's changing the evil. Yeah, because uh, for example, somebody has authority. Has they see him, they don't play. They're like, I put everything away. Or he see things. He says, Yeah, Juan, taqullah, this is no good. But this man's statements are to be taken seriously. He goes and changes that evil. He said, but if a person cannot change the evil and he knows the evil isn't there, he don't go. No. Likewise, he says that the person who is inviting you is a Muslim. If he's a Muslim and there is no other problems, he's obligatory. But if he's not a Muslim, then he's not obligatory. Okay? You gotta let us the, the answer to your question, but then you have to see what's that family of yours, what how they doing that 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 walima, that wedding feast is it? It is haram, halal. What's in there? Okay, no. Likewise, Sheikh Muhammad says the food of the walima should be halal, permissible, something that you can eat, not something haram. Likewise, أن لا تتضمن إجابة الدعوة إسقاط واجب أو ما هو ما هو أوجب منها فإن تضمن ذلك حرمة الإجابة. Likewise, by you going to invite to honor that invitation, cause you to 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 neglect one of the obligations. So now you don't neglect an obligation to to go to the walima. Who can give me an example? نعم. Hey now, especially for the Imam of the Masjid, someone who's supposed to lead the Salat, but who's going to lead the Salat after him? Unless if there is some agreement. Now, what else? Now, Ahsant, your parents, father or mother or both, they want you to do something, and they it need to be done at that time. You don't you don't leave them hanging and go to the Walima. No. 
You send a nice text message to the person, Akhi, may Allah SWT preserve you. I was planning to come, but something happened. My parents, if he's upon Sunnah and upon the way of the Salaf, he will say, La, Akhi, you don't have, subhanAllah, this is an obligation. It's okay, this is, this is a higher obligation upon you. Jazakallah khair. You Another example. No. Ahsant. You, you, you have work. You're not going to quit your job to go for a walima. Or you're working for a brother, a store, and you're the only one in the store. You want to shut down the store and go to walima? You can't do that. It's an obligation to be in the store because that's the contract. All right? Now I'm going to close for a couple of hours, go get me. No. It's an obligation. You don't. If the, if the person you work for says, La, let's both close, inshallah, let's go, that's something else. But you don't just close. That's an obligation to be there. <laughs> Another example. No? Huh? Ahsant. Ay, naam. If there is amn, naam. وكذلك he said it's not something that uh, you have to travel and and get yourself in a hard shape and لا طيب أي نعم بارك الله فيكم هذا وصلى الله وسلم على محمد وعلى آله صحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا